Hi there, how are you? Just letting you know, the uh, video that you are about to watch, should you choose to do so, is a um, compilation of videos I made this week uh, that I posted on Instagram stories and Facebook stories. So as you know, when you're doing those videos, you have to keep them really short and sweet. So I had to chunk them all together. Um, and I did basically some behind the scenes videos of me doing a recreation of uh, an old song from my first band, The Awakening, a song called November. Um, so what you're gonna see after this little introduction video is uh, a series of snippets. So hopefully it'll all make sense. Uh, I'm making reference to something called Thursday Night Live with Ian, that's me. Um, so you know, on Facebook, I do weekly concerts uh, every Thursday night at 6.30 on Facebook. And um, so anyway, I did this November song for Facebook for that concert. So since I had to create a track to play to, I thought I would videotape some of the, or videotape some of the uh, behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, that's what you're about to watch. I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Hey everybody, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, just to let you know, a little announcement here. Um, this Thursday at Thursday Night Live with Moi Selfson, um, I'll be performing a song called November. And November was a song that uh, I did in my band, The Awakening. Uh, it was my first real legit band. Uh, we had a record deal in the 80s. That was great. We were all so rich. We still have tons of money left from all the money we made back in the 80s. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so November is a song that was collaborated by the whole group. And uh, and I've always enjoyed it. Uh, all these years later, like many, I mean, we wrote it and recorded it in like, late 88, early 89. So I'm going to create a track for it from scratch so that I can play it on Thursday night for you, the home viewer. So I'm going to document the whole thing for you so you can kind of see how it all comes together. So stay tuned. So first of all, The Awakening was a four-piece band. Uh, it started in, uh, we basically got going around 1985, maybe 84, I forget. Um, and it was four guys. It was uh, Andrew Horrocks who played guitar and, and sang. Um, Mike Powell played drums, uh, Al Powell played bass, and I played keyboards and had tremendous 80s hair. Um, so early in the band, I mean, one guy would write a song and bring it in and the band would learn it and it was that sort of thing. But as we got rolling, the band became much more collaborative. Um, and towards the end of our time as a group, which was basically late 88, early 89, um, we'd basically become very, very collaborative. And uh, Andy would come up with a guitar riff He'd bring it to practice. We'd write the song on the spot. Everyone would contribute something, and then there you go. And we had tons of songs that were written like that. So November is one of them. So basically, the song started with Andy playing his beautiful yellow uh, Telecaster. And this was all he played. I don't know if you can see okay, but it's basically... I'm doing it cheating so you can see what I'm doing. He wouldn't have played it like that. He would have played it like this. basically what he came in with. I'm not sure if he had anything for a chorus, but that's what he had. And from that, I mean, who knows what those chords, I mean, I know what the chords are, but it's all open. But I mean, who knows what key that's in? You don't really know until the bass part goes on. And that's where uh, Al Powell came in and he came up with his bass part, which completely modified where the, the tonal center of the song was. So then Al Powell came in handy on the bass and he came up with this. was neat. So from there, basically, Mike Powell uh, put a, a jungle kind of, he was left-handed, so sort of a jungle beat to it. And uh, and then we basically had the verse structure. And uh, I probably wrote the melody. It's hard to say. I don't remember. 
Uh, Mike wrote all the words. Our drummer Mike wrote all the words. Um, so basically, that's that's how the song started with the little guitar riff, cool bass melody, uh, the drum beat, the groove underneath it, and then the melody started flowing, uh, and I started adding goofy DX7 two FD uh, keyboard parts to it. And then here we go. So enough chit chat. Now it's time to fire up my uh, my machine and uh, start recording. Here we go. So as with all recording projects, you have to start with an empty slate. So uh, I've created a um, uh, project in Cubase, which is what I used to record on. And uh, so I'll show you kind of how I've started here. Okay, so I basically started with an empty slate. I, I grabbed some basic sounds. I uh, established my tempo as being about 124. We didn't, I don't think we played to a click when we recorded this recording. So it's it's a little bit like that, a little 124, a little 125, a little 126. Um, that's the great thing about playing as a, as a live band is that the music actually can breathe. So I basically started with a piano track, which basically allows me, whoops, allows me to kind of get the, the framework of the song established. So I just played the guitar part on the piano. Did <laughs> perfectly just like that. Basically played that all the way through so I could establish my, my timeline. And then I put a fake bass down, which I'll replace later. Um, with real bass. And then I've just been basically building the tune up. So now I have basically the whole tune mapped out. I found an old 80s sound here. I'll just stop. I found an old 80s sound uh, from this um, plugin that I have that's basically um, an Oberheim synth. Uh, let me get out of here so you can see what it looks like. It's like an old uh, Arturia Oberheim synth, synth. And it sounds very much like the sound I used back in the 80s when I played a DX7. Let me turn it up a bit so you can hear it. how to play it, but it's like this um, um. so that's pretty cool that sounds very much like the dx7 so that's fun and i got a couple of old sounds that sort of sound like the dx7 as well so now that that's done, it's time to do the drums, which is always the most work when you can't just record a drummer. So I pulled up a kit, and I'm going to get hard to do while holding a camera. <laughs> so I'll do this for real after the fact. But it's basically like, there's the kick drum. Hey everybody, uh, hello, hello, hello. Um, what's what's the expression, same hat, different day? Um, just kidding. Um, so I am now basically done my uh, track for the Awakening song, November. Um, so I'm just going to kind of demonstrate some of the stuff that went into recreating it. Um, so basically I did uh, piano tracks to take the place of the electric guitar parts because I don't have access to a good sounding electric guitar here. Um, and it would, I'd never have the right tone that Andy had when he played it on his telly. So it's basically a piano thing. I'll, when I do the, the song live tonight, um, I'll be playing acoustic guitar, so it'll kind of build it up a little bit. Um, so I've got some piano tracks. Uh, I recorded a bass track playing my uh, Fender Precision with a pick, so it would have uh, a similar kind of ballsy, aggressive sound that Al Powell used to have when he played bass with the band. Um, and I played it pretty much exactly how he played it. Um, I did want to change the song at all it's pretty much the way it was except just a little bit better sounding obviously it's been what 30 something years since we did the recording i'm old um so then the drums i don't know if you can see it i guess you can't um right there it's a, a program called easy drummer and uh basically i just picked a what they call a modern drum kit with an 80s approach to it so that means there's a bit of a Gated reverb on the whoops, gated reverb on the uh, the snare, so it sounds a bit like the '80s sounded. Uh, Mike played, Mike Powell played all the drums on this on his. Uh, I think he bought it. Yeah, it was a pair of Ludwig drums he bought for the uh, previous album we had done before that. So this is me basically trying to replicate Mike's drum part, playing it on keyboard. So it's like. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, I basically play it in, I play it in just like that, where I just have the kick drum. I try to 
to get the flams so it's not just all quantized. You gotta get the, those little guys in there and make it sound realistic. So I've got that and then um, I've got a bunch of keyboard sounds I used. Uh, I found this sound that sounds very much like my old DX7. Um, That's pretty cool. That sounds like sort of... So that's coming from an Oberheim uh, plugin. That's not what I had. Back uh, in the 80s, I had a DX7 2 FD. FD stood for floppy disk. We were so high tech. Um, and I've got an old string sound here. Uh, I combined two string sounds together to replicate another DX7 sound I had back in the late 80s. So it's pretty, it doesn't have a lot of, obviously it's pretty, pretty snarly sounding, but I combine that with this. A more modern, beefy synth sound. And then just now, after I did the track, I realized I'm missing a couple of elements. Back in the 80s, it was so customary to do everything, what we called pad tracks. And a pad was basically this, it usually came from a Roland D50. Um, that sounds like voices, but it was that sort of a thing where it was this dreamy thing that you could just play. You would never play full chords. You'd always play like, here, I gotta make sure you can see what I'm doing. You would just play like fifths or the odd fourth. kind of fill the track out you pad the track that's why they call them pad tracks so I just added that this morning and then I found I have a Mellotron uh, which of course we didn't have a Mellotron in the 80s uh, but I have a pad that I use that I created on the Mellotron uh, it looks like this by the way uh, that's the plug-in if you can see it that's the uh, Mellotron plug-in there and I created a patch called dreamy pad Oop, where are you So I could do the middle section. So that's basically what I've done. Sorry, I look so patchy. I literally just woke up, literally. So um, yeah, so now I've got basically everything laid in. Uh, I've got audio tracks all in here. And I'm just doing a really basic, super quick, good enough for a Facebook live concert mix. Um, the reality is, is when I do my Facebook live concerts, I don't have a PA system. Uh, like I don't have actual stereo speakers. Um, I'm taking everything that I, like my microphone, my guitar, Ray's guitar, uh, everything that gets plugged in to my Cubase setup comes out of a mono output out of my bass amp, my Aguilar bass amp. So it's it's certainly not ideal for live sound for a gig, but it's all I have. I, uh, in the, the COVID age where I don't have any uh, paying work, uh, I can't exactly be going, you know, going out and buying a PA system so I can do my home concerts on Facebook. So all of this with headphones on sounds pretty great, sounds nice and stereo, but it's all gonna get transmogrified into mono coming out of my bass amp. So it, it will only sound as good as it can sound. So uh, I'm gonna stop this recording and start a new one and basically let you hear some of what I've done. Thanks for watching.